the emergence of order out of chaos, the emergence of something dif discernible, certainly from the perspective of Pythag Pythagoras, for example, uh, he talks about cosmos, uh, cosmos coming out of chaos, order coming out of chaos. And he says order is beautiful, cosmos is beautiful. Cosmos also means a jewel. And you think about what a jewel is in the context of something you find underground, where underground, you know, it's just loads of kind of mashed up uh, bits of rock. And then suddenly you've got a very orderly, very beautiful, very angular thing that you find in there, a diamond or an emerald or something. So order within chaos, order is a beautiful thing. Um, when order gets too tight, then you need to make fluid the fix. So it's, you know, a, a continual drive towards order and you get the new world order and you get um, oppression, all that kind of stuff. So it's not, it's not an endless uh, process, but, but generally the process towards more order uh, is a good thing. Um, so this idea of, of, of a discernible thing, right? Um, let me take an example of shells on the beach, right? Imagine... On the beach, there's all these shells and they're scattered around in a chaotic arrangement. And you take those things and you arrange them into a line. Now, the word in Hebrew for to arrange something into a line, uh, which is three letters, it's Dalet Bet Resh Dabar. That is the root of the word Dabar or Davar. And that means in Hebrew, in English, it means word, as in defined thing. And it also means thing. I think it's the only language where the same word is used for word and thing, which is really interesting. Because if you think about where is that line, you know, you're looking at it on the beach, but a moment ago you had a bunch of chaos, and then you, make, then you just arranged chaos into a line, as in you deburred it, and now you've got a thing, but where's the thing? Is the thing on the beach, or is the thing in your mind? You see what I'm saying? Right? Where, where, what is it that brings together one shell, and the next shell, and the next shell, and the next shell, and the next shell? Right, uh, the bar is the the ordering of it, the arranging of it. Logos, again, logos is described by Philo, for example, as that as the glue and chain which brings everything together. And in the very next chapter of his book, he says it's the divider which divides all things. So think about that line again on the beach. That line brings together the shells, but it also divides two parts of the beach. And those lines are very important. They exist in our heads. They don't exist. Well, maybe they exist in the world, but it's very difficult to say whether. Uh, a line of shells exists in the world. But they're so important that people are prepared to fight and kill over lines drawn in the sand. The edges of countries, for example. So this comes back to this question of where is the first thing? So And God said, there's the word, let there be light. And there was light. So the word comes first. And then once there's a word for it, we can perceive it. And God saw the light. And then there's a value judgment that it was good. You know, you see the line, you see my side of the beach, my side of the beach is good. That means your side of the beach is bad. And then you've got the value judgment, and we're talking about the temporal lobes. So this process of cognition, I find in various ways expressed in in the Bible. I mean, this is just kind of scratching the surface of it of it here. And again, in Genesis two, you've got this wonderful line: "Out of the ground, Yahweh Elohim formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air, and he brought them unto Adam to see what he was called them. Why doesn't he name them himself?" <laughs> It's a different part of the brain. The frontal lobes are what does neo what makes words. And when, when we're talking about frontal lobes, I think we're talking about Adam, we're talking about Noah, we're talking about the humans and the story of the frontal lobes. When we're talking about the definition of things, Yahweh Elohim, we're talking about parietal lobes. Then when we're talking about El Shaddai, all these different god names, you know, this gets quite detailed and quite involved, as you, you would have read it in my book. But um, the different God names seem to, in many ways, map onto different parts of the brain, different processes of, of, uh, of cognition.